Nicholas M. Dyke has retired. Welcome aboard. We are about to bring you a story based upon an actual incident which occurred during World War II. But for reasons which will become obvious, we're going to change the names of the submarine and the men who sailed her. For this is a story of a submarine that was almost lost because of a man who had too much courage. And not till he learned the true meaning of fear could she sail home safely again. In May of 1944, the USS Starfish was ready to depart from Brisbane, Australia on a second war patrol. A skipper, Lieutenant Commander John Brent, was on the bridge. All was in readiness, with one exception. All hands on board? For the usual one exception. Well, a minute and a half to go. He's cutting it thin as usual. Now he'll make it, Captain. He always does. You mean so far, Crowder. One of these days. Well, see, I told you, Captain. That's his girl's car. A real nice place, this Brisbane. I must say it's been very hospitable. Thank you kindly, sir, she said. We always try to please our allies in times of stress. Uh, yeah, uh, come to think of it, you might have done just that, honey. Steve, come back. Honey, I'm going to do just that. Steve. You take care of yourself, see? Huh? Just made it, Rand. Yes, sir. Right on time, sir. What happens if you cut it too thin one of these days? I just wouldn't do that, sir. I just wouldn't do that. Cast off all lines! That's the way it began. The second war patrol of the USS Starfish in May of 1944. And two weeks out of Brisbane in the South China Sea, the next incident took place. You know, Ralphie boy, this man's war, it isn't what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> That's all. This is our second patrol now. We haven't had a bit of action yet. Well, we chalked up five kills. Oh, a big deal. Three freighters, two supply ships. It's no fun shooting at something that doesn't shoot back. A job to keep hitting that Japanese shipping. Not to take any unnecessary chances that could... Plane on the starboard bow! Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! Look up and down. Come on, Steve. Rand up there? Yes, sir. Deck. 23 feet. 24 feet. Rand? 25 feet. Twenty-six feet. Last man, sir. Twenty-seven feet. The hatch won't close, sir. Twenty-eight feet. Twenty-nine feet. Thirty feet. That's secured, sir. What in places were you waiting for? I just wanted to make sure we weren't diving away from a bird, sir, instead of an airplane. Cutting figures were taking the chance to find out. You were right. Cutting it thin again, Rand. What would happen if that hatch had hung up a few seconds longer? Take it down to 200 feet and level off. Aye, aye, sir. They never did know whether Martin had sighted an enemy plane or a bird. But for the next two days, they continued their patrol without incident. Then on the third day, events took a radical turn. Bang. Mark. 318. What have we got, Captain? Looks like a tanker with a destroyer escort. Well, let us have a little fun with those babies, huh? You'll get it. Silently, determinedly, the starfish moved in on her target. It was their first real taste of the threat of impending enemy attack. A crew sweated out the approach. All, that is, with the exception of Steve Rand. 
Let's go. I'd sure like to get a shot at him. Pipe down, Steve. I just hate to go deep without taking a crack at him, that's all. Turn on your speaker. The starfish dove to maximum depth leveled off and reduced speed to run as silently as possible. The enemy was determined and tenacious. The depth charge pattern efficient, deadly and prolonged. satisfied that he'd completed his job, the Japanese destroyer moved away. But the starfish and its men continued to sweat it out, not yet daring to move, not yet daring to surface. What, is it getting a little too rough for you, Ralphie boy? No, I was just thinking of Mary. Your wife? Ralphie, this is no time to think about the women. A fellow's got enough to do just worrying about himself. Could be wrong. It's the same thing that made you shy from that speck in the clouds the other day, remember? Huh? And that's how come you're jittery now. Look, kid, if you don't cut it out, you're gonna end up being just plain scared. I am. You're kidding. Why? I don't want to be stuck at the bottom of the China Sea for the rest of eternity. Who does, kid? You just gotta figure the other guy is gonna get it, not you. No, I don't know. And am I thinking of marrying? Not wanting to take chances? Some cockeyed way. It it kind of helps me be a little afraid. I well, like I'm... Well, part of the rest of these guys might feel that way, too. Man, you kind of lost me on that one. Haven't you ever been afraid? No. Might be better if you had. A man who isn't a little scared can get careless, Ran. He can cut it a little too thin. All right, who's got the watch when we surface? Me and Martin, sir. All right. Let's take her up. again, isn't it, Steve? You didn't have much of a chance to check around. It's funny overcast, kid. It doesn't take much time to see if anything's close enough to... <laughs> clear the bridge! Clear the bridge! <laughs> dive! Dive! Come on, kid. Let's go! Wait! 
How is he, Captain? He won't have to worry about being afraid anymore. Why did you do it, Ralphie? Why? on your mind, Steve. Yes, I have. Look, why did he do it, Captain? Martin? Mm-hmm. I can't figure it out. He was scared. He wanted to get home to his wife. He could have got down through that hatch, but he didn't do it. Why? Well, you'll have to come up with the answer to that one yourself, Steve. You better do it soon. You call those lookouts to the bridge pretty fast. Maybe you were cutting it too close again. You know how overcast it was, Captain. Nobody... I said maybe. I don't really know. But one thing I do know, you're not grown up enough to know what fear is. In my book, that means you don't know your responsibility to others. Without that, you're no submariner. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm going to recommend your transfer out to submarines before the next patrol. <laughs> Sir, I'd like to get permission from you to get married. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd also like to ask another favor of you, if you don't mind. What's that? Well, I'd like to be the first man from the Starfish to talk with Ralph Martin's widow, sir. They lived right here in Brisbane. Permission granted. Thank you, sir. You were mighty lucky to find me in, Steve. I'm practically ready to leave. As you can see, I'm just about packed. It was fortunate you found me in as you did. I'm sorry if I interrupted you, Mary. I just wanted to tell you about Ralph. It was awfully nice of you to do so, Steve. I think I have the picture quite clearly in mind. Well, I think I have everything. These are furnished sticks, you know. Ralph and I moved in here right after our honeymoon. Well, it is sometimes hard to remember what belongs to the owner and what belongs to oneself. Mary, I hope I made myself clear when I told you how very sorry I am about your husband. Please, Steve. Don't give it a second thought. We all know what war is. We have to learn to expect things like this. Well... 
That's it. I didn't make myself clear at all. Look, the only thing I can tell you is that your husband was just about the bravest man I've ever known. Well, naturally, I'm delighted to hear that. Of course, I always knew it about Ralph. How brave and courageous and daring. I guess every wife likes to believe that about her husband. But I always knew it about Ralph. No, he wasn't brave, Steve. He was just a man. I remember how frightened I was the night before he sailed. Until he took me in his arms and told me how frightened he was, too. Mary, he was just... And the two of us like a couple of scared kids. <laughs> but you know something, Steve? We found strength and courage out of knowing that we were both afraid. <laughs> and still could do what had to be done. I think that's why Ralph didn't come home to me. I think that's why a lot of men won't come home. Because of that, Mary, many others will. You see, there's something about sharing fear that gives you the courage to be brave, you know? Now, that made Ralph able to do what he did. That's right, Steve. And I know it's given me the courage to do what I have to do from now on. <laughs> oh, Steve. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. <laughs> Shall we go now? August of 1944, the USS Starfish made ready to shove off on a third war patrol. You're gonna take real good care of yourself, you hear? Steve, you will come back. I'm sure gonna try, honey. I figure now I got a real good reason to. My transfer didn't go through in time, Captain. I didn't make it. What? Did some thinking about you. Talk to a couple of women. Women? Your wife, Martin's widow. Captain, I don't... Let's put it this way. Welcome aboard, Steve. Starfish got underway for her third war patrol. He had orders to join a wolf pack of submarines patrolling the South China Sea. The wolf pack wreaked havoc with Japan's supply and communication lines. Starfish took refuge on the bottom of the sea until the fury above passed over. All right, men, we're going to have to disturb this little rest of yours. The batteries are getting low. Let's take her up. 
I've got the watch when we surface, Captain. Very right, well, Steve. <laughs> Crank the hatch. Pressure, one half inch. All right, open the hatch. Look out to the bridge. Four feet. Twenty-five feet. Twenty-six feet. You were shut, Captain. All back. Emergency. Outside. He saved us. I'm past 90 feet. Sure hold, son. What about? All compartments report. to the overhead. All other compartments secured. 190 feet, sir. Leveling off. All ahead, one third. Pumps, motors, panels, electrical gear all fitted out. The starfish is still sound. We can hand operators safely back to Brisbane. One thing I know, what Steve did for Martin's widow, I guess now I can do for Steve's. Be back in a moment. And there you have it. The story of the USS Starfish and the man who enabled her to come home because he had finally learned the meaning of fear and the responsibility a man has to his shipmates. The Navy Cross was awarded posthumously to the widow of the man we've called Lieutenant Steve Rand. But there is a deeper, a greater meaning to this story than the medal. It has to do with the hearts of men, with the countless true values of living that are learned when survival itself is in the balance. Thanks for being with us. I hope you will join us again when we bring you another authentic story about the silent service. Take your down and up the line, through the deep blue underneath the ocean. We'll control the ocean's wide. Come down, down, underneath the sea. Take the course for past the world. In the future, yet to be. That we're 
Underneath the sea